And now we'll talk about friction. We'll start off by saying what friction is. We need to define the term. And we can define it like this. We can say that friction is a force. So first recognize that it's a force. It's a force that opposes the motion between two surfaces. A force that opposes the motion between two surfaces. And as always, a little picture might help. If you have an object that's moving, so it's moving along at some velocity, call it V. And let's suppose this is a box that's sliding across the floor. So it's been pushed and it's sliding along. Well, there's this force right down here where the two surfaces come into contact. And that force we call friction. And so if it's moving to the right, the friction is going to oppose that motion. So the friction will be to the left. And we often indicate the force of friction with a lowercase f. So the force of friction is the force that makes it stop. Friction always opposes the motion. So if something is moving, if something's sliding, friction is the force that's working against the motion. So if you're pushing something, another way to, to realize it, if you're pushing something, so here you are, you're pushing this box. You're exerting a force this way. Well, friction is working against you. We'll call the force that you push with big F, and the friction here is the little f. Friction is the force that you have to overcome. in order to make it move. You have to push harder than the force of friction in order to get that box to accelerate. Now Galileo was the first person to realize that friction is a force and he did this by imagining an object sliding along the floor like we have in this picture here and the object is sliding to a stop and he imagined what if the surface were really smooth? If you had a really slick floor and this object were sliding he realized well it would slide farther. And if it were really, really slick, it could, it could conceivably slide a long way before coming to a stop. And he imagined, what if the object, what if the floor were perfectly slick? If there were no friction at all, and, and you gave something a push, what would happen? If there were no friction at all, it would just continue to slide forever, or, or until it hit a wall or something. It would move at a constant speed. It wouldn't slow down, because there wouldn't be any force opposing the motion. And this idea is what led Newton to realize that it's the object's inertia. It just continues to move forward. It doesn't naturally stop. It naturally continues to move. It only stops because of some force, in this case the force of friction. So Galileo didn't completely figure out inertia, but his understanding of friction as a force led to Newton's understanding of inertia. Now friction occurs because objects are rough. Surfaces have some roughness to them. I'll write it that way. Friction occurs because surfaces have some roughness to them. Even if things appear slick, like the top of your table or the top of your desk might appear smooth, but if you look with a magnifying glass or a microscope, you'll see texture to it. Down on a microscopic scale, there's always some roughness to two surfaces. And those little, little um, unevenness, the, the uneven parts of a surface, oppose the motion. So if you were to imagine an object sitting on the tabletop, for, for example, and suppose you were to zoom in and look real closely at the, the boundary there. The, the tabletop is actually not perfectly smooth. And the object sitting on it is not perfectly smooth either. Okay. Nothing is perfectly smooth on a microscopic scale. And if you look, if you find little tiny pieces that are poking down more than others, on the object and little tiny pieces that are poking up more than others on the surface. When the object tries to move, those pieces are going to bump into each other and that will oppose the motion. That will also cause little pieces of the object or little pieces of the surface to break off. 
So when things rub against each other, when surfaces rub against each other, they tend to show wear, wear and tear over time. And things eventually get rubbed down or worn out. And it's because of the friction. It's the same, the same phenomenon at a microscopic level that, that opposes the motion also causes things to wear out.